Hello everyone and welcome to this week's Product School webinar. Thanks for joining us today. Just in case you didn't know, Product School offers product management certificates online and at our 20 campuses worldwide. On top of that, every week we offer some amazing local product management events and host online webinars, live streams, and Ask Me Anything sessions. Head over to productschool.com after this webinar to check them out. I really feel um, very delighted to be part of today's session. This is actually my first presentation um, at Product School. Firstly, hope, hopefully the first of many. Um, so very, very delighted. I'm actually based here in Miami, Florida. Very, very lucky to be based in Miami, Florida, not um, where our headquarters of Massacre is in New York. And what I really want to cover today is two key um, things I think is really important as being a product manager to make you, you successful in your day-to-day -day job. So first one being understanding is very key. Understanding your consumer, your customer, your, the segment you want to target at, understanding your product, it's very, very key. And what's going to really make you successful is how do you influence? Influencing is very, very powerful as part of a, part of a product manager. So I want, to talk, I want to give you some examples and some of my experience as being a product manager in my current role, past roles, how that could help you um, in, within your day-to-day -day job as, as a product manager or, or for people that want to be, become a product manager some of the key learnings. So I want to show so the agenda I have on today. Um, I want to give an introduction about myself to start off with. And then I'll talk a little bit about understanding your consumer. Then I'll dive into the importance of actually analyzing market requirements um, when you actually want to launch and implement products um, within your region, within your market, or globally. And I'll leave it for last, the power of influencing, which is really key. I'll, hopefully leave i will not hopefully i will definitely leave at least five minutes at the end for any q's and a's i really want to hear from you guys um i just want to talk about my experiences but i really want to help you for any type of questions or comments you guys might have so introduction about myself so i am the product um director of product innovation here at mastercard as i mentioned based here in miami florida i've been at mastercard for three and a half years so far and i've had three different product roles um started off in digital payments and i was there for approximately a year and a half focused specifically in a regional role for latin american caribbean and after a year and a half i transitioned over to the loyalty team which is very very interesting um, managing also for the uh, latin american region but a complete different set of products focusing in uh, an offer product suite um, that we were selling to our issuers um, with, within throughout the whole entire region and then now currently I am part of the global team of MasterCard of a team that's called Legal Franchise and Integrity and really, really working closely with three different regions, with Asia Pacific, with Latin America and with the North America markets. So basically I just don't cover Middle East and Asia and Europe. So it's pretty crazy. Um, really working together and how to really build our strategy globally um, to ensure our footprints in the next 10 years. So just to be very clear, it's really, really, it's really interesting that a whole global background personally. So if you look into the, in the screen right now, which I'm sharing, you can see there are four flags there. So I'm, I'm Felipe, you know, I'm, I'm Brazilian, I'm born in Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. I was just married to a Mexican um, actually seven months ago. My mom's American and my dad's French. So it's actually a pretty good background um, to be part of a global team. So I've actually lived in three, three or four different countries. I was born in Brazil, lived, I live here in Miami now, I live in France. Um, I actually just came back from an Asia Pacific tour um, for work. I was actually in Malaysia um, for a couple of days, Indonesia, Singapore, India, and Bangladesh, really talking to customers about what are we doing as a mass card um, perspective to really ensure footprint for the next 10 years? On the bottom part of the screen, this is actually my personal, um, what, what I love to do. So I love to fly. Um, I, love, I love being in the mountains. I love skiing. I love playing sports, tennis, and golf. And I always value much more my personal life versus my professional life. If you're not happy personally, you will never be happy professional. So I try to have as much fun as possible at work in order to, for me to enjoy what I do. Because if not, if you think about, yes, product is really cool, cool it's really fun. It could get boring at some time. It's not, wow, it's not that amazing. It's not like, hey, I want to have fun every single day. But if you 
if I bring my personal life to, to my professional life, I, I try to enjoy as much as possible. So actually, pre, before joining Masker, I want to give you a little bit of um, background too. So I was at American Express um, for five years, which actually started off in the financial um, organization with American Express and controllership. And then I transitioned over to digital marketing and then national digital products too. So you can see I have international finance, marketing, and product background. It's really, really interesting um, and actually really helps me in my day-to-day -day job when I manage, when I'm talking internally to the stakeholders, when I'm talking to customers, to our customers at MasterCard really being um, issuers, being banks, and, and also acquirers as well, and processors. So that background is really, really, really key. So I really, and, and many people actually question me. It's like, Phil, I mean, I mean, you jump over from finance to marketing and then and then to products. I mean, are, are, what are we focusing on? Like, if you really want to grow and become a general manager or grow to become a very senior exec in the company, having that different vision in every single different department is really, really key. And even for a product manager as well. So understanding numbers, understanding how to do ROI, understanding how to do even digital marketing, how do I market my product to market? Those are very, very, very key. So what is MasterCard? Um, so many of you probably think, okay, MasterCard is my debit cards, my credit cards, my prepaid cards, my commercial cards. We're not only cards, uh, we're actually known as a technology company. Um, we're actually changing our, not changing, we're actually transitioning our culture over to be a technology company, just very like what Google, um, Facebook, Amazon, all those companies are, are, be, stru are culturally structuring themselves. We're also gearing um, our company towards that way too. And even if you look in, into our offices, we don't, we, don't, we don't look like a bank, right? We don't look like a card company. We, we, it's actually a really, really fun company to work at. Um, and you could see even our, our, our internal um, offices, it's, it's very dynamic, it's all open, safe, it's really, really fun. I don't want to talk about MasterCard, I want to talk about my experiences to you. I think that's what's key and that's what you guys want to listen about. So I'll just transition over to um, the next topic is understanding your consumer. Very key. So what does that really mean, right? So what I mean about understanding your consumer is when you're creating a product or developing a product, you're, you have to understand who you're targeting to. What, what is your target segment? What does your consumer really want? It's not just, hey, okay, I listen to my boss or I listen to the ONT team. We're developing this product, please market it. No, before even developing a product from a technology perspective or even from a strategy perspective, first thing is having that consumer lens. That is key because at the end of the day, you're, tar you're, you're actually bringing to market that pro product and who is going to be using a product as a consumer. If the consumer does not enjoy or like or value that product, he will not be using it. So your product will not even be used or it's going to be actually have a very short um, product um, lifespan. So I'll actually give an example. So when I've been, uh, when I was in the, within the loyalty team here at MasterCard, I was managing the off of product line, as I mentioned to you guys. And one of the product I was managing is called MasterCard Travel Awards. It's actually focused on offering, um, offering offers, right? It's, it's, an, it's an offer program to our affluent segment for basically for all of our card holders that travel from their home country. For example, in my case, I was managing for Latin American Caribbean. All the card holders are traveling to, for example, from Brazil to the United States, they would receive specific offers at specific merch that we negotiated with. And those offers were basically statement credits in values of vary between 10, 20 to 50 to hundred dollars. And it was a very seamless experience. So we, what we did, so we, we heard from our consumer, right? We were targeting affluent segment. Affluent segment being our high net worth spenders. We know that within Latin America, 50% of the transaction volume, so basically people spend, the transaction volume, cross-border transaction volume, so it basically means that all the transaction that's spent outside of the home country is in the United States. So we knew that, okay, we need to negotiate offers that are focused in the United States and, our, and merchants that are of interest to our cardholders back in the Latin American countries. Not only Latin American country, but also other countries that we actually uh, offer this product to. And we target, okay, what are the key merchants that people love to, um, that people love to spend at? 
So you think about Bloomingdale's of the world, you think about Macy's of the world, you think about Carter's, you think about um, Neiman Marcus, Michael Kors, et cetera, in the retail space, which is basically the, the key merchant that people, when they travel outside their country and they go in and they travel to the United States, there'll be transaction in those stores. So we did all that analysis. Okay, so we know that we're, we're, we're targeting the affluent segment, number one. We know that 50% of the affluent segment when they travel outside their home country, they go to the United States. That's key. And they usually transact at these key merchants and in these key cities, right? So we know that Miami um, is a key, core, um, key destination for Latin Americans. We know that New York, Orlando, Boston, Los Angeles, San Francisco, et cetera. Those are key cities where usually the Latin Americans travel to and transact and spend that. So we created this whole plan. We created the product and a seamless product in the back end technology. Um, which is very seamless for our, our customer being the bank to implement. And very easy for our bank to, to communicate that to our the end consumer being the cardholder. So it's actually a win-win situation for everyone. So if you think about on the consumer side, it's something that's very attractive um, for them. And the offers are very attractive. So it's usually spend, for example, 100 bucks in Bloomingdale's and again, 25 bucks back. So think about it for almost 25% off. It's seamless, right? So you don't have to bring a coupon, print and prove coupon, nothing. That cardholder, it depends on the issuer. It's usually auto roll or opt in. And the basic when they travel to the United States, they transact to these merchants that participate in the program, swipe, and within two or three days when the transaction actually clears, they they go into the same credit and they're going to the same and they see they receive that same credit. So very, very easy experience. And which is also a win-win situation for the issuer too. So of course, they make much more money and when they're transa um, when the cardholder transaction more. And MasterCard also wins too because the cardholder's top wallet choice will be MasterCard. So it's what we did since the beginning is we have to understand our consumer, our end consumer being our cardholders. We really know what do they want, who are we targeting, and what are the trends, and what do they and what's going to be the experience for the consumer too. It has to be a seamless experience. If you're developing products today that if you don't think about the consumer side, it's seamless, consumers will not use, will not adapt, will not, and your product will not be adopted to the market. So then I'll continue to the, the next topic. Analyze market requirements. What do I mean about that? A lot of markets today when you're launching products have regulations or specific market requirements in terms of um, bank regulations or, or government regulations, et cetera. It, it depends on every single different market. And that's really, really key because sometimes um, you have the, the product development team, the technology team that's in, um, that's sitting out in, in headquarters that are developing this product that they want to be, that they think they want to be used globally. Um, but then you want, and then I'm, for example, I'm the pro product manager specifically for Latin America. And I know that there are requirements for my region or for my specific country that I need to be aware of and that it needs to be part of the product development um, and the product requirement for that specific uh, for, for that specific launch. That's key. And I'm going to give an example. So actually my first position here at MasterCard, I was managing a product um, that's called In Control. In Control, it's, it's basically for cardholders that want to track how much they're spending and receive alerts on the phone. And this product was developed from the global team. Actually, the technology, the one team at MasterCard is actually based in St. Louis. So I was working with them and working with um, the Latin American folks. And the first market we wanted to go and implement this was uh, Brazil. And the main requirement for Brazil is that you need to make sure that the product includes and the product has a function or, or one of the specifications of it must be able to recognize installments because 90, 80 to 90% of transactions in Brazil are, using, are, are done on installments. When we go back to the initial product development, they, that was not contemplated. And we're like, okay, if we really want to implement this and we want to take this to market and go to Brazil and sell this to issuers, if this is a part of the product um, specifications, this, we cannot market this product at all. So 
that's that's when we when we when you become a product it's very key a, a product manager it's really important that first as i mentioned understand your consumer analyze market requirements and then with that you actually kind of become broker you become an, in a regional product role you become a broker of you have to understand the local needs translate those local needs to global and they know how to influence global to make sure that's part of their pipeline in, in development of, of the product. So it's, 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 it's really, really, really important to have that vision of, okay, what are the requirements of this, not only from a product perspective, right, on the technology side, but on the market side as well. Because sometimes you want to develop a global product, and that's not going to be... Um, you, you can't really market that product. You can't really take that product to market in specific countries, which if you didn't contemplate having that um, those requirements when in development of the product. So always think that in mind, market requirements and focus on the consumer, uh, on, on what the consumer really wants. So. Then my last topic is, it's really the power of influence. Right? So the first thing I was talking about is understanding your consumer, analyzing market requirements, and I think one of the most important thing is the power of influencing. And what do I really mean about that is we really need to know how to influence up, down, across, internal and external. Because you know, within a big global organization, being a product manager, you're gonna have, you're gonna receive so many different requests from different markets or for different regions. And you have to know how to prioritize. And you're first sitting within the market or within the regional role, you're gonna to have to go up to global. Global is the one actually manages the pipeline and know how to influence them. And then make sure, okay, I created this business case because I wanna take this product to my country and these requirements or, or these specifications was not contemplated. I need to make sure this is contemplated within the whole product pipeline, the, uh, the whole product roadmap. Because if not, I will not be able to market that. That's one thing. And also how do I influence the senior executives within the company too. Influence really meaning that get on top of their mind, making sure that they're worried what you're doing and influencing them that this is going to drive X amount of revenue for the company or not even revenue, this is going to drive this type of experience for my consumers, which at the end will drive X amount of revenue for my company. So I'll give you an example of, of influence, right? So when I was um, in, in my current role, in my global product innovation role, what I'm currently in today, I manage Asia Pacific, as I mentioned to you, Latin America and the North America markets from a global perspective. So it's very different. So I actually had local product development roles when I was in actually living in Brazil. I had regional roles um, previously here at Massacre when I was in the Lawyers Solutions team or when I was in part of the digital payments team. And now I've been having the global perspective. And I know influencing, as I mentioned to you guys, is very, very, very key. Meaning that I receive all these type of requests from Asia Pacific, from Latin America, from the US team. And I need to make sure how to influence these people, not only in the, in the region or in the market, but also to my senior execs too, to make sure that are we covering everything that's needed to take this product to the next level? and be able to make sure that we could actually market, commercialize, and sell these products. And we'll drive the revenue we really want to, we want to take this, uh, the product to. So when I, was, uh, when I was actually in my trip right now, I've been receiving a lot, a lot of different requests, um, specifically when I was in India, it was really, really interesting. That the product that um, we're trying to take to market, it's not ready for the India specifically. And they were really saying, okay, if you really get my product ready um, and for me to commercialize this within the Indian market, I could drive X amount of revenue for the company. I'm like, okay, this is interesting. Let me take this to my um, senior execs and, and show this to them and, and, and make sure that when we speak to the ONT executives, this is part of their pipeline too, that India being a key market, we understand the consumer. We understood the market requirements. We need to make sure that if we, if we don't contemplate what's really needed and what's really required for that market, 
we weren't able to sell this there. So I need to influence my current team and the senior execs and show them that I'm going to drive X amount of revenue. And it's going to be very important for our product roadmap. And it's going to be very important for our organization and for our customers being our issuers and our acquirers in order for us to take this to market. So as I mentioned, three really important things. One is understanding your consumer. Two is analyze market requirements. And th three is power of influencing. And as I relate to influencing, when you're usually in a product management role, product, product manager role, you work as a broker, as I mentioned to you a, a few minutes ago, really have to understand product number one, understand your market, understand what are the requirements, translate that to either the global team or to the execs and work as a, and manage that as a broker. You really become a literally simple, simply as a broker. That's how I d describe the product manager. You act as a broker from a product management perspective, not on the development side and the technology side, but it's really on the management side. So those are my key messages I want to share with you guys. And I want to open up now for questions um, that anyone might have. So I'll open up to you, Dan. Hello. Thank you for that presentation. Very good. Uh, so at the moment, we only have one question, but I'm hoping a few more people will post here as you answer this first one. So um, what is a process or framework you follow to operationalize the product launch? Very good question. So here internally at MasterCard, we use a process called product management excellence. And you actually go through three different phases, right? Um, you go from the create phase, it was actually creating creating the strategy side of the product. Then you go to the build phase, it's actually building the product out. And then the last phase is called the run phase, actually taking that product to market. So it's really focused on those three things. And you have um, a committee that you actually present in each phase. Um, and you have to get approval from every single, there's a big committee, like at least 10, 15 people from different areas of the company where you present them like, this is, the create what I'm actually want to create as a product from a strategy perspective. Then after that, after that's approved, it goes to the build, right? So then that goes to the ONT team. They build out for you. When the product is ready, you take it to run, which actually take into market. Hopefully that responds to the question. Perfect. Thanks. Okay, we got a we got a couple more here. Um, how do you overcome lack of data challenges, such as lack of clear revenue impact, for example, in order to put requirements into the global product backlog? Mm -hmm. That's a very good question. Um, and, I, and I think data, um, it's, it's one of the most important things within, with even within influencing, right? And, and, it's, and even within MasterCard, it's very, very tough. And we have so many different sources of data where we get from um, different revenue sources, different everything. And we have to, sometimes we don't have a lack of data. It's actually how do you illustrate the data that you have, that you have, you have to work with. Um, so it's, I would say any data is, I won't say any data is good data, but I would say work with the data that you have and try to position that um, as clear as possible to senior management. So when you have the backlog in the ONT side, um, you, you could ex clearly explain that to, to the ONT team. Cool. Okay, our next question is, how do you prioritize input from different markets? Very good question. So we usually do prioritization. What are priority, mar um, what are priority markets with the MasterCard? What are the markets actually drive revenue for us that were that we're actually focusing and targeting in. And so those are the key markets when we talk about, if we have a very limited um, pipeline or very limited capacity to develop, we'll look about what are the key markets that we we'll actually want to implement or, or have key requirements. And we protest from that way. So we have, for example, within Latin America, what are priority markets being Brazil, Mexico, um, Colombia, right? Those are the top three markets we have within the Latin American region. 
So we look initially, we'll look into those key markets for any type of requests, because those are the markets that are going to drive most revenue for us. Then we have the second level of key markets for us, right? Um, across the globe, not only within Latin America. I usually give that, give that uh, as an example, because I'm actually from Latin America, but you could use any type of example across any other regions. But you look into what are the key markets and prioritize from that. And within the key markets, um, our customers being banks, we, we see what are our priority banks within those markets too. If all those are covered, then of course, we'll look into the second level of priority market and the priority customers. And some, and some of these products, um, we, we also, it depends on the product you're really managing as well. But um, sometimes you want to do a trial and error and, and not a big market. You sometimes want to target what's going to be a, a smaller market for you to trial and error just to make sure you minimize the risks. So it depends. Um, when you do prioritization in terms of product requirements or product development, we look into our key markets first because those are the ones that drive most revenue for the company. And then we look at the second tier of priority markets. But if you want to do, if you want to think about priority markets to launch a product or to test a product, then it depends. We usually look into a smaller, smaller markets to do um, trial and error. Awesome, thanks. Um, another question. I would like an example of some specific tasks or steps you use for influencing executives. Very good question. So keep it short, keep it easy to understand, and I usually always try to use simple language. Sometimes we product managers, we want to go into the technical side. We use, want to use technical language, technical words, et cetera. And when you're talking to senior execs, that's not, that's not what they're looking for. It's really, I look into always organizing the three main bullet points. This is a business case. This is my objective. This is what I want to develop. This is my result I'm going to be driving. This is my revenue I'm going to be driving for the company. Very, very, very short, very straight to the point and very, um, and very easy to understand because we know senior execs have a humongous agenda. Sometimes you're the last in the list in terms of their priority. So when you talk to them, is it's like having an elevator, uh, elevator speech, right? So it's a really a two or three minute speech, um, easy to understand and easy, uh, easy to present to the senior execs. Cool. So our next question is, how do you think about iteration and experimentation to get better at execution, executing personalization on product? Wait, can you repeat that, Dan? Sorry. Sorry. How do you think about iteration and experimentation to get better at executing personalization on product? Well, that's a very interesting question. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, let me think about that. Repeat that once again, experience, iteration, assessment, uh, Sure, no problem, no problem. Um, how do you think about iteration and experimentation iteration. to get okay. better at executing personalization? <laughs> wow, I really don't know how to respond to that question. That's a, really, that's a more technical question, but uh, I'll, I'll take my, I'll, I'll take a, a try on that. So what we usually do here in, in our, in, in, in our process for here in Mascar personalization or iteration or testing, we go through a lot of what we call the UAT phases, um, user, um, user accepted testing. And that's where we do a lot of trial and error and really testing internally before that goes externally to, um, to our customers. So it's really, we do a lot of voice of customer. Um, that's part of the process as well, a part of the testing phase and really understanding from them, okay, do you like this? Do you not like this? What can we make better? What can we make? Um, what do we need to change? What do we need to edit within the product? So it's really hearing from them when we're trying to personalize our product too. And then we take it, um, we, 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 we take it back to our strategy part is, how does it link to our strategy of our product? What we really want to accomplish, does that make sense? Um, do we want to personalize? Is, do we want to do too much personalization? Because you know personalization is actually sometimes not cost efficient. But at the end of the day, we know that our consumers always look for personalization um, uh, and, and as much targeted for them. So it's, it's a balance of how much personalization can we do that's cost efficient versus what really the consumer really wants. Okay, awesome. And for our last question, how can I migrate to, product, to a product manager role if the market is always asking for PM experience? That 
it, it always depends how you position yourself. So, mm-hmm. and that's a very good question. And that was the same question I was asked when I came from the finance. Um, I came, I started my career in finance and I transitioned over to digital marketing and then to digital products. And they question like, how are you going to, what type of expertise you're bringing um, to a product management role? So it's product management. It's really, how do you, how do you, it, it's, you don't just, and this, there's different product management position in every single different company. And there's different product management roles within different organizations within that same company too. And having a diverse background as my background when I came in, that's why I sold it to them is I'm bringing finance. So understanding numbers very key. I bring in my marketing background. So how do I market my product to the market? And I bring in my experience of working and being, living in different countries. So it's really understanding the market, understanding the consumer. So if you think about what's really, really key for a successful product manager is on the, on the product management, on the technical side, really on the management side, it's how do you really bring strategy to product world? It's not, it's not a rocket science. It's not out of this world. It's simply, as I mentioned, understanding the consumer, what do you want to build? What do you want to target? understanding really the market requirements and then influencing those are the three main things and those are the three things you don't have to learn within a product management role you can learn within finance you can learn within marketing you can learn within um, different various roles and even within my team there's a many many people that does not come from a pm background many come from a legal background many come from a, a marketing background even some come from an hr background too so it's it's always how you position yourself within within the talks of when you're talking for the PM role, when you're interviewing for PM role. Great. Well, that's all of our questions for today. Thank you so much for that awesome presentation and uh, for answering some community questions. Appreciate it, Dan. Thanks so much. And I look cool. forward to speaking to you guys in the near future and uh, hope you guys have a great day. Awesome. So uh, before we leave, I wanted to give you all some more uh, information on our upcoming courses and uh, events so you have the resources to become a product manager. We offer part-time courses for anyone ready to take it to the next level. Our product management, coding, data analytics, digital marketing, and blockchain courses are taught by industry experts working at companies like Google and Facebook. In addition to that, we offer online and on-site events at our 15 campuses across the U.S., U.K., and Canada. And if you're located near a campus, make sure you stop by one of our weekly events every Wednesday and Thursday. And you can also find us on social media at Product School. And be sure to keep up with the latest product management content at the product blog at productschool.com. Thank you all for joining. Enjoy the rest of the day. And I uh, hope to see you next week. Have a good one, Felipe. Thanks, Dan. Appreciate it.